these timing belt tensioner bearing assemblies will be assembled in this step. In addition to these tensioner mounts that are affixed to the base of the machine. In this step, this belt tensioner will be assembled. You'll need two of these pieces, one of these pieces, a quarter inch by one inch, I'm sorry, a quarter inch by two inch screw, a quarter inch nut, you'll need one of these wooden pieces, two bearings, uh, 608, two shim washers, two 5 16 inch nuts, and one 5 16 inch by two inch screw. You'll need a set of these for, for two of these, the components for this one and these components. Okay, so you'll need first insert this quarter inch screw into this part, and then take this fish looking plastic piece and put it here in the slot. Take the 5 16 inch screw, put it into this hole, take the shim, insert the shim into the 5 16 inch screw. Now the two bearings, another shim washer, and then while this screw is not all the way through, put the other fish looking piece here and into the screw. So now you can take the screw and, and put it all the way through. The reason why we have two nuts is for a jam nut situation. So you're tightening this nut onto this nut so you can still have some wiggle area. So now this is done. You can go ahead and put the quarter inch screw in and only thread the nut on a couple threads. So you still have quite a bit of room here. You're going to use this as a tensioner. So you're going to, once the, the belt is in the machine and um, going around these bearings, you're going to use this nut to tension the entire the belt run. Now we can go ahead and mount this piece onto the base. So we'll need four quarter inch by one and a half inch screws and four cross dowels. So we'll use these two holes. In this step, the nozzle will be fastened to this plexiglass plate, and the plexiglass plate will be fastened to this bearing block. In this step, I'm gonna install the plexiglass carriage plate onto the bearing block for this axis. You'll need this piece and four M6 16 millimeter screws. Now you can see that the carriage is able to engage the limit switch. In this step, the timing belt will be routed around the drive pulley and around the tensioner, routed into this hole here and fastened in this step. Now we're ready to route the timing belt onto this axis. I'm gonna put it through the belt tensioner first, like this. I'm just going to go around the drive sprocket. Let's see if I can get a good view of this. And then back to the carriage. This belt should be somewhere around uh, 68 inches in length. So I'm just going to route it into this hole and this one as well. Make sure that this is undone as much as possible. Okay. To keep this in place, I'm using a quarter inch by one inch screw and then a quarter inch nut. You'll still be able to get a good grip on this and pull it as much as possible. And then just put on the nut, tighten this first and then tighten the nut. And it should not be able to, to move. Now to tension this, you'll be able to tension it by just screwing this nut on. You may have to use a, a wrench or a socket to do this.
Okay, in this step, we're gonna take the nozzle and we'll fasten it to the, to the carriage plate. You'll need two number eight three quarter inch screws and two number eight nuts. I'm gonna remove this portion here just to make it a little easier for me to access this other screw. This part doesn't need to be completely tightened because it still needs to be adjusted up and down to align with the mirrors. The timing belts on both sides will be routed around the tensioners and around the drive pulleys and also affixed to the gantry on both sides in this step using this drive pulley and this belt tensioner. And we'll be using these two screws to, to hold the belt in place. To hold the belt in place, we'll use these number eight, one and a half inch screws and number eight nuts. We don't want to tighten this yet because we're just gonna temporarily um, put this in place because we still need to make sure that the all these are um, fastened down tightly and we have all the sides. They can still be pulled. All right, let's do the other side. Okay, they should stay in place now. The X-axis limit switch will be installed in this step. The limit switch for this particular axis, we have to take a look at where this nozzle will nearly hit the edge here. So I wanna make sure that it's within that area. And what I did is I drilled a couple holes, let it engage first, I positioned it, and then drilled two holes. I'm just using these number four screws, wood screws. Be careful not to screw it down too tightly where you'll crack the housing of the limit switch. Test it and see if it works. Yes. And at its full engagement, you can see we still have a little bit of space that the nozzle will not hit the this end, this edge. In this step, the two drivers will be installed. The 24 volt power supply will be installed and the 36 volt power supply will be installed onto the base of the machine. You'll need two of these drivers, four number eight one inch screws and four nut inserts or rivet nuts. Now I'm gonna install the 24 volt, one amp power supply. Use these two holes. I'm using two one inch number six screws and two number six nuts. In this step, the 36 volt, 10 amp power supply will be installed. We use these four screws going into these four screw holes. You'll need four M4 25 millimeter screws. And before you install it, the correct setting for the voltage needs to be set because this is going to be faced down on this platform. So I'm going to be setting this to 110. Now I can install it. 